What's going on everybody? Thanks for coming back to Custom Keyboard Creations for episode number two. This is the online series dedicated to showcasing the highest end and most unique mechanical keyboards that the community here has to offer. Tonight, we've got five contestants pinning their boards up against each other. However, there can only be one winner of the grand prize of $20. Now I'm going to need your help down in the comments and in the straw poll in the description to help decide who the winner of the episode is, so make sure to vote for your favorite board down in the description below. Before we do move on, I want to give a quick shout out to my homie Bent from Texas because he's rocking the party here tonight with these tunes that you're hearing right now. If you guys want to hear more awesome music made by him, go ahead and check out the description. Before we move on into today's episode, we do have a monumental award to give away because the winner of episode number one of Custom Keyboard Creations is Charlotte with her Apple Standard Keyboard M0116 variant. Congratulations Charlotte and I'm going to be reaching out here to you shortly to claim your prize. Jumping into today's episode, we've got five new contestants. We're talking about Colonel Jesus, Ned, Charlotte, Succulent Dan, and Tudal. We've got five incredible boards to cover, so without further ado, let's jump right into it. Kicking off the action, we have Colonel Jesus with his hand-wired custom 3D printed macro pad. Yeah, you heard that right. This baby is a custom from the roots up and is a true one of. This is a 12 keyed macro pad featuring a rotary encoder that has 12 indentations as well as a 50 section slider. There's no traditional PCB in this board because Colonel hand wired the switches manually to the Pro Micro at Mega 32U4 microcontroller. Now the way he's achieved this in such a clean manner is honestly art in itself. Great job, man. The keycaps being featured here are some of the beige and gray XDA canvas caps. This XDA style came out in 2016 and has a much lower profile than something like the SA caps. He's using the Gatoron Milky Red Linear Switches at 45 grams actuation force. Colonel used all the tools at his disposal to create something truly unique and inspiring. So thank you so much for coming on the show, man, and good luck to you in the typing test. Next up on display is Ned with his insane family of split ergos. Hopefully we'll get to cover a couple more of these babies in the future. Am I right chat? Today though we're glossing over his Curia Revision 1.0 board inspired by Thomas Bart. This is approximately a 40% ergo split board featuring a rotary encoder and an OLED display on each side. The Curia Revision 1.0 PCB sits inside a high profile acrylic case from littlekeyboards.com. This case looks incredible at night as you can see his underglow LEDs through most of the case. Ned and the Colonel both have a great sense of style as far as keycaps go because he also used those same XDA canvas keycaps. Now he does have some key Illuminati novelties for accents. He chose to use the lightest variant of those Xylent switches and they're very quiet. This is the 62 gram version and they're a bit heavier than MX Browns, but they offer a much smoother experience with a crisp tactile bump to the press. The stabs in play are the purple Duroc 2U screw in stabs and they're lubed up with super lube dielectric grease. Ned also soldered in some Milmax sockets to make the PCB fully hot swappable. The rotary encoders feature two different layers and on one of the layer they do page up and down and also zoom in and out and on the other layer, they do undo slash redo, and they control the volume up and down as well. Ned, we all appreciate your gorgeous family, and it's time to hear this Curia get it on.
Let's welcome Charlotte back as we dive into her Apple Extended Keyboard number no. 2 inspired 60% board. This custom is powered by Hasu's Alp 64 PCB that supports many factory and clone versions of the Alp switches. She's using a generic low profile 60% case made from Alu, but I'm using a very similar case on my 75% board and I think they're great. Charlotte also has Hasu's FR4 backplate to support those switches. The keycaps she's using come from her first ISO Apple Extended Keyboard number no. 2, which had some defects. And her friend also donated some keys to help finish the set. Speaking of switches, we remember Charlotte by those unique Alp switches that she swears by. It's no different today because we've got some clean SKCM cream Alp switches which she removed the dampeners on. Check out this teardown she included so we can see how these operate. She did lube those cream Alp switches with weld tight TF2 plus PTFE lubricant. Now to finish it up, she removed the original logo from the beat up Apple extended board and epoxied it to the front of the case. On the back, her friend hooked up a custom logo specifically for her own custom boards. Thanks again, Charlotte. We always love seeing your customs. Now let's hear this baby type. Next up for review is Succulent Dan with his succulent chocolate themed 60% board. I have to say, I love when people mix their love for keyboards with other hobbies like Dan's plants. Now Dan also has a sweet build video and a building service which you can find over at his YouTube channel called Mech Fix and Chill. This is a board powered by the DZ60 Revision 3.0 PCB by KBD fans. It's sitting inside the Trick 60 case in Cian that he got from the group buy. This gorgeous case does have a diffuser allowing those underglow LEDs to shine through the sides. Dan's rocking the chocolate themed double shot PBT caps from Ducky. This sweet and warm set pairs really nicely with Dan's desk and his wrist rest. For switches, Dan is using the popular Gatoron Yellows, which have a linear 50 gram actuation force. He's properly lubed them up with Crytox 205G0, and his Duroc screw in stabs are also lubed up with some dielectric. Although the current keycap set he's using doesn't support backlighting, Dan did mod in some white through hole LEDs for some extra light at night. Now, make sure to swing by Mech Fix and Chill for some awesome content, and let's listen to his typing test while you're searching that up. Last, but definitely not least, we have Tudal from France with his very first ever build. This is a 60% board that is well built on a budget and it types like a dream. He primarily uses this board for some gaming on Apex Legends and Osu. This 60% is powered by the GK61 hot swappable PCB, which also has pre-soldered RGB LEDs socketed for each switch. Tudal's board sits inside the white case that came with the kit and uses an aluminum back plate that's also white to assist with that white out look, which he nailed. Circling back to those caps, these HyperX pudding caps seem to be very popular and Tudal got them in white to complement his setup. With the LEDs from the PCB, this board is shining bright. As far as switches go, he's using some Gatoron Optical Reds which have a linear 45 gram actuation force. From what I've read online, the optical version of these switches provide double the durability as the normal Gat Reds. Tudal, thanks so much for coming on the show and we wish you luck in the type test. Well, that was some really fierce competition here featured today on episode number two of CKC. 
Make sure if you're watching this from the audience that you go down into the description, click the link for the straw poll, and vote for your favorite board so that person has a better chance at winning the $20 grand prize. If you're interested in having your board featured here on the show, there's also a link in the description about a video teaching you just how to do that. But again, before we get off the air, I just want to say thank you to my homie Bent for making this episode rock with the tunes. And if you guys want to be notified when these videos go live, make sure you click the bell icon when you subscribe. I'm Tony from Custom Keyboard Creations, and I'll see you next time.